Welcome to Nation Beat. I am Janelle Norville bringing you this brief on the pulse of our nation and highlights around the heart of St. Lucia. St. Lucia may not be in the direct path of Tropical Storm Isaac, but it is not all clear. Education officials are satisfied that a suitable solution has been found to the Beanfield Comprehensive School dilemma. The government of St. Lucia has rallied with the citizenry in supporting the family of Botham Shem Jean and showcasing the world of opportunity under the sea. St. Lucia may not be in the direct path of the fifth storm of the Atlantic hurricane season, but it is not all clear. Both global and regional models are in agreement that the center of Tropical Storm Isaac will pass well north of St. Lucia on Thursday. However, the intensity of Tropical Storm Isaac will be felt. For this reason, the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, in consultation with Med Services and NEMO, have decided to take precautionary measures to close all schools Thursday, 13 September 2018. An announcement will be made as it relates to the reopening of schools on Friday and persons are asked to listen for official announcements on the media. The ministry urges the public to stay informed and remain safe as we prepare for heavy rains associated with the weather system. More now on those expected rains. A rain ban associated with the tropical storm has begun affecting the Lesser Antilles including St. Lucia. Tropical Storm Isaac is expected to produce total rainfall accumulations of 50 to 100 millimeters on St. Lucia from Wednesday evening into early morning Friday, September 14, 2018. Tropical storm force winds are not expected to affect St. Lucia during the passage of Isaac and it has not been deemed necessary to issue a tropical storm watch or warning for St. Lucia. This does not mean that residents should relax preparedness and mitigation measures as storms and hurricanes are unpredictable. Um, Isaac, the, the status right now, it is still at um, tropical storm intensity. Uh, reconnaissance aircraft uh, visited the system um, today and found that the system is it, it, getting a little less organized, but it is still at um, tropical storm um, um, strength. Um, they find that it, can, it is weakening, they expect that when it crosses um, the island chain, it will still be at um, tropical storm intensity. Very early Wednesday morning, a rain band crossed associated with Isaac across the island chain, and it did affect St. Lucia. Um, during the day, the early morning uh, into midday, uh, well, conditions were partly cloudy to cloudy. There were showers in, in some, some areas. Um, the, this um, conditions, partly cloudy conditions, will persist until tonight. Tonight from about 8 o'clock, um, cloudiness will increase and rainfall, we expect rainfall from the system. The peak rainfall we expect um, from about 2 a.m. on Thursday uh, to say about uh, before midday um, on Friday. That is when you expect the peak rainfall from this system. We expect um, um, intermittent rain mixed with uh, moderate to heavy showers. Therefore, we are asking people to take all necessary precautions against flooding and landslides. Um, the system, as it moves, will continue to weaken. By the time it reaches the longitude of um, the the less Antilles, it will it will be further. Um, it will continue to lose strength. So by tomorrow, the maximum sustained winds will be brought down from about 50 um, 50 knots to about um, 45 knots, and the system will continue westward over the Caribbean Sea. Some coastal flooding is possible and sea swells between 3 and 4 meters generated by Isaac are expected along the west coast of St. Lucia on Thursday, September 13, 2018. Residents in areas prone to flooding and landslides are advised to take the necessary precautions to safeguard livelihoods. You need to remain vigilant. You need to ensure that you have activated your plans. You need to ensure that you have what is required 
should there be any eventuality associated with the system. We also want to emphasize the point that these systems are unpredictable. We know that it's now a tropical storm, but there is no telling whether it will increase in speed or whether it will change direction. And so the important thing, as we've always said, is to make sure that you are prepared at all times. We do expect rainfall, as I said, from the system. And so we ask persons who are in flood prone areas and also persons in landslide prone areas, because we know that we have been fairly dry uh, in the recent past, to be extremely cautious, to be extremely vigilant, and to make sure that all their systems, all their readiness systems, their preparedness actions are in place in advance of the passage of this system. Tropical storm warnings are in effect for Martinique, Dominica, and Guadeloupe. Tropical storm watches are in effect for Montserrat, St. Kitts and Nevis, Antigua, Sabre, and St. Eustatius. As Isaac approaches, the Caribbean remembers well the devastation dealt by Hurricane Maria. In fact, Dominica, which fell the brunt of the Category 5 monster storm, is still recovering. Now less than a week to the one-year anniversary of Hurricane Maria, Dominica is on high alert. Maria struck on September 18, 2017. I have been advised and, and we have taken the decision uh, and we have accepted the advice to suspend work uh, for the public service uh, on Thursday, 13 September. So there will be no work for public officers. And again, we would like to call on the private sector uh, to follow in that um, same manner. Um, to 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 um, have their employees um, stay home. I, I understand that there are essential services, and those essential services um, will be at work. So people like myself will be at work. Um, um, but the the rest of us in the public service um, would will are asked to stay home and to ensure that we can secure ourselves, secure our families, and our properties. And we'd like for the private sector to do the same. And this is why I think going forward, you know, we, we have to implement legislation that will authorize um, the NEPO and the, and the cabinet to, that one an issue, uh, uh, one decision will be taken in regards to work, it would apply to every employee in the country. So these are things that we need to do in, in, in terms of disaster management going forward. And it's a recommendation we're hoping that we can fulfill before the end of this year. According to Prime Minister Skerritt, a safety and security plan has been implemented in conjunction with the police force and the National Emergency Planning Organization, NEPO. Citizens are urged to follow the directives given by the security entities. Dominica's Acting Chief Med Officer Marshall Alexander provides some insight as to what is to be expected. Total rainfall accumulations of 4 to 6 inches with isolated, high, with isolated higher amounts in higher elevations across Dominica. This rainfall may cause life-threatening flash flooding and landslides or mudslides. Feeder bands from the system has already begun affecting the island. Tropical storm conditions are expected on Dominica by early Thursday. Some coastal flooding is possible in areas of onshore winds. Near the coast, the surge will be accompanied by large waves up to 12 to 16 feet. Swells generated by Isaac will begin to affect the area by this afternoon. These swells are likely to cause life-threatening surf and rip current conditions. A small craft warning, a high surf advisory, and a flood warning will be in effect for Dominica as of 6 p.m. today. A World Bank assessment estimated damages and losses caused by Hurricane Maria at 1.3 billion U.S. dollars or 224 percent of Dominica's GDP. Back here at home, education officials are expressing satisfaction with a solution found to house incoming students of the Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School. Chris Satney reports the institution had run into some difficulty in accommodating the new students and a compromise had to be reached to find a solution. The Beanfield Comprehensive had over the last year grown incapable of enrolling any new students, making parents of students who had chosen the school at the common entrance level very uncomfortable. Following much consultation, it was decided that an unused block of the V4 primary would be renovated to accommodate the students for the new academic year. 
Now refurbished, the once derelict block presently houses two Form 1 classes and one Form 2 class of the Beanfield Comprehensive. Though the block is being shared with classes of the VA4 Primary, Minister with Responsibility for Education, Honorable Dr. Gail Brigabert, is nonetheless happy for the cooperation of the two schools to help resolve the issue of space at the Beanfield Comprehensive. The extent to which stakeholders are willing to go to ensure that their children attend that school tells me that it is a school of choice, tells me that they have distinguished themselves as a secondary school in the South, and clearly children aspire. Children dream of attending that school. Children wish to attend that school, and that speaks volume. Principal of the Beanfield Comprehensive, Stephen O'Geist, has meantime thanked parents and guardians for the level of interest, patience and confidence they have shown in the institution and thanked the ministry for working with it to find a suitable solution to the issue. We've tried to do a very good job in terms of delivering quality education at the Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School and our parents would like us to continue the work. That is why they were very pleased that the ministry found a solution to the situation of the lack of space so that we can continue the work that we're doing at the Binfield Comprehensive Secondary School. And it was no easy task at all for the reinstituted buildings maintenance unit headed by Alden Louis Fernand as director of works. He says his team was up to the huge challenge of preparing this and other school structure ahead of the new academic year. In the Viewford Primary School, we have a brand new roof. The external walls have been touched up with paint. All plumbing works have been fixed. Electrical installation, new ceilings in classrooms. We were able to accomplish renovations on 80% of schools island-wide. And though it was a late start with the renovation works, we were able to meet our goal. The Beanfield Comprehensive Secondary School, housed at the old TechVoc building in VA4, was opened in 2015 and was born out of a need to combine the two campuses of the VA4 Comprehensive into one institution. From the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, I am Chris Satney reporting. The government of St. Lucia has rallied with the citizenry in supporting the family of Botham Shemjur. The 26-year-old was shot and killed in his apartment in Dallas, Texas, by a white female police officer. The officer had entered Jill's apartment believing it was her own. According to an affidavit, the officer encountered Jill, thought him to be a burglar, and fired her weapon. Botham Shem Jill was hit in the chest. The officer has been charged with manslaughter. However, the district attorney has indicated that the charge can be revised upward upon completion of investigations. Jill's killing has shaken not just the nation of St. Lucia, but the wider Caribbean. Tuesday evening, a vigil was held in his childhood community of Laclery. More in this report. St. Lucians unified in grief converged on the Laclery playing field, an area frequented by both Shem Jill as child, to celebrate his life, his accomplishments and potential. Jill graduated from Hardin's College of Business Administration in Arkansas, with a degree in finance in 2016, leading him to employment at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Dallas. By all accounts, Botham Jeu was well on his way to realizing his dreams when his life was cut short by an off-duty female police officer who shot him in his own apartment. This young man is part of all of us. He played here, he played rugby, he was involved in basketball, he, was, he did everything. You know, so thank you. Saint Lucia, thank you so much. 26-year-old Botham Je was the son of Alison Je, former permanent secretary in the Ministry of Education, Innovation, Gender Relations and Sustainable Development, and Bertram Je, store supervisor at the Water and Sewage Company, Wasco. The Je family has described the circumstances of Botham's death as an awful nightmare. The tragic incident has attracted global media attention with matriarch Alison Je commanding the respect of all. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Commerce, Titus Preville, served alongside Mrs. Je in the public service and says he is amazed by the remarkable strength she has demonstrated. She's a consummate professional and you could see it coming out in her responses, but I know she must be hurting. And I'm so proud of her that in spite of the personal anguish that she's going through, she's able to 
carry a message throughout the world on this matter that is carried out in a manner that depicts poise, reason, professionalism, and that in itself challenges the others to act in that manner, to act professionally and respond professionally. I have asked too many questions and I've been told that there are no answers yet. I'm looking forward to all of the powers that be to come up with the answers to make me more satisfied that they are doing what is in the best interest of getting justice for both of them. The entire nation is hoping that justice will prevail in the matter. Describing Botham Je as an exemplary St. Lucian, Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney, speaking during a press conference in Dallas with the Je family, said St. Lucia is wrought by grief and anger. Sadness, knowing how close Allison and their family were to Botham. The other emotion is one of, of anger. To think that a young man would be in his apartment and the possibility could be that somebody could come to his door and he ends up being dead. Prime Minister Chastney indicated that the Embassy of St. Lucia to the United States of America will do all within its power to assist the family. The Organization of Eastern Caribbean States is also lending support and monitoring the situation. This is a matter of concern not only to the government of St. Lucia but also to the, the the leadership of the entire OECS and I would venture CARICOM as well. So I would expect that as things develop we will see increasing attention being paid to this matter by the governments of the OECS and CARICOM and um, they will be watching and advocating and insisting that justice is done on behalf of the family. Botham Shemja would have celebrated his 27th birthday on September 29, 2018. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This is Nation Week. Stay with us. During a severe storm, not all danger is from Mother Nature. Remind your children beforehand to stay close to you. Play only in safe areas. And make sure they tell you immediately if someone attempts to molest them. Plan for emergencies. Plan for your children. In an effort to showcase careers within the dive trade, a career showcase for students of secondary schools within District 1 and 2 is being held here as part of the 2018 edition of Dive Fest. The St. Lucia Divers Association and the St. Lucia Tourism Authority have endorsed the event. Dive Fest embraces dive enthusiasts of all skill levels and highlights why exploring St. Lucia's underwater marine life is a must-do for visitors and locals. Here's Anisia Antoine. The diving industry is one of the many forces which drives the tourism market in St. Lucia. Dive St. Lucia, in collaboration with the St. Lucia Tourism Authority, organized a career tour for students of the Babano Secondary School at the ongoing dive fest at the Windjammer Landing Villa Beach Resort. And diving, diving in St. Lucia is something we're encouraging more youngsters to get into. It's a fantastic career, it pays well, it allows them the, the, the opportunity to travel a lot. Um, right now I can, I can list at least 20 St. Lucians who I know who are school instructors. We started here and they're all over the world, from, from England to Turks and Caicos. All right? um, so what we're trying to say to these youngsters is, you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be all these things. You can be a reporter, a cameraman, but diving can encompass all. So we're, we're trying to encourage the youngsters to look at non-traditional stuff. And especially now, now that there are so many hotels and tourism is a big thing in St. Lucia. We're trying to encourage more St. Lucians to get into it. The Dive Fest is a week-long event full of boat and shore dives, party courses and photographic competitions. 
The 2016 winner of the Dive Fest was on hand and encouraged the students to seize every opportunity to learn Saint about Lucia. diving. Uh, I find St. Lucia the, one of the most beautiful islands in the Caribbean. Uh, it is uh, a, an island and an industry that has nowhere else but to expand. Uh, it's got one of the most beautiful coral reef systems in the world. And uh, the one thing I love about St. Lucia is that everybody is always so welcoming and all the uh, dive operators, everybody do a great job at protecting the reefs. As part of the ongoing St. Lucia showcase, travel agents and journalists will get a chance to experience Dive Fest firsthand. The fest commenced on Monday, September 8th and will culminate on Saturday, September 15th. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. The Chinese Embassy has made a donation to the National Emergency Management Organization's relief supplies effort. The handing over was done Wednesday by the Embassy's property manager. Even though we are far from together, but we are connected by our heart. If you suffer something, we feel we also suffer because we are brothers. We are the same kind of situation in terms of development. The solution in the Caribbean islands is a very disaster-prone country. You have an earthquake just now, just the previous day, several days ago. You have a hurricane. You have, you have a flood. And also you have a landslide. Kind of that. So, it's a very difficult for a single institution, even a single country, to deal with that. You should seek or you should welcome support. You should encourage support from the outside so that you can facilitate your effort. The Department of Forestry is in the process of upgrading the island's mini zoo. Assistant Chief Forestry Officer Alwyn Donnelly said while the mini zoo aids government's wildlife management efforts, the recent expansion will also help improve forestry officers' knowledge of native species. He spoke to the works on this week's Agriculture on the Move program. What we were seeking to do is to upskill you know, our um, awareness of our, particularly our native species, you know, with some of the animals that we could keep, you know, in that confined space, but to create a more open, you know, space for them and um, to upgrade, you know, the facilities that we have there. So we came up with, you know, this nice term in terms of the wildlife conservation and education, you know, center. So um, as part you know of that entire effort mm -hmm. so we've had some construction you know uh, to facilitate that to going on and what you see there is really you know that effort to to manage um also the captive element of it Pius Haynes the senior wildlife conservation officer said the new conservation center has a dual purpose the two main focus of 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 the uh upgraded zoo is conservation and education. When we live in an environment, in an ecosystem, where you have all these different hierarchy of organisms and they all play the role integrally in you know, conditioning mm -hmm. um, the environment and also performing specific functions that would enable this environment to be resilient and to help us you know, cope mm -hmm. and so on. So I'd like to encourage um, our fellow St. Lucians to uh, preserve our wildlife, to conserve them, to protect them, and um, to seek to learn more about them. The mini zoo is part of a scenic tour that includes the Union Nature Trail, a forest hike where visitors can view a number of species native to St. Lucia in both wild and captive habitats. You can hear more of the discussion Thursday when Agriculture on the Move airs on NTN. And as we leave you this important reminder. The St. Lucia Med Services and the National Emergency Management Organization, NEMO, have indicated that St. Lucia is expected to get some heavy rainfall on Thursday, September 13, into Friday, September 14, 2018. 
while St. Lucia is not under tropical storm watch or warning, the Department of Education, Innovation and Gender Relations, in consultation with Met Services and NEMO, have decided to take precautionary measures and wish to inform that all schools will be closed on Thursday, 13 September 2018. An announcement will be made as it relates to the re reopening of schools on Friday, and persons are asked to listen for official announcements on the media. Persons are asked to stay informed and remain safe as we prepare for heavy rains associated with the weather system. That's Nation Beat. Join us next time as we feel the pulse and heart of our community. I am Janelle Norville.